The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Wednesday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you have markets pulling back a bit from the acceleration we saw yesterday. S&Ps right now, you're negative by 17 points, trading at 4608. Yesterday, talk about an acceleration. We trade higher into the market. You open, and then at about 1.15 p.m. Eastern Time, you had the S&Ps charge up about 40 points right into the close. You back things up. We're pretty much right where we were coming into the opening bell yesterday. 46.07 in the S&Ps. Now, remarkable, considering some of the geopolitical uh, de-escalation talk paired back a bit. Uh, words not mattering as much as actions may. and uh, But nonetheless, markets holding up pretty well, everything in context. You had some really remarkable moves yesterday, especially within some of those equities in particular. We'll jump around in a moment. NASDAQ 100, you make it to 15,268 at the close yesterday. We're trading right now down about six tenths percent. 15,142, you get the Dow backing off a bit, still above 35,000 at 35,064. You get the Russell negative by eight points as well. Bitcoin. We'll talk about Bitcoin. Talk about some hacks, man. I think I got 600 million up there uh, is one headline. I think there was another headline out there as well. But nonetheless, Bitcoin holding up relatively well at 47,420. There was a time when the news broke of a $600 million crypto heist that maybe that would hurt the crypto market. It's just not happening right now, which says a lot. Ethereum holding up pretty well at 3,417 right now. You got crude catching a pop from the de-escalation yesterday. Just like the market, back to where we were, you got the crude back to where we were, man. Talk about $10 down and $10 up. We'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstat at 40 past the hour. He loves talking some Forex markets, loves talking some crude in particular as well. We'll get his take. And you got gold rebounding as well. Really remarkable. You think about the recoil, man. Talk about an overreaction yesterday. The market, you can see, just waiting for anything to hint that uh, talks could lead to an eventual ceasefire, which could lead to a de-escalation over there. Uh, not sure that you really got it yesterday, even if the market was looking for it. Now, the one thing that didn't give it all back just yet is the move in bonds and notes. You see the move in notes. You're talking about we're a full point above where we were yesterday. Uh, meanwhile, you get the markets right back to where we were. We got a yield right now of 24 2.4%, the yield on the 10-year, uh, pretty remarkable considering you were sitting at about 1.7% when the war began about five weeks ago. And we jump over to the volatility index. We were dealing with lows we haven't seen in about, what, a couple months maybe? 1867, you take a look at the VIX. Yeah, going back to about January 14th, uh, just over two months, two and a half months or so since we've seen these levels on the VIX. We pair those gains. 36 down to 1957. You're positive, but just by a bit on the VIX. All right, let's jump around to the fundamental news. We got some jobs data. We got private payrolls, 455,000 jobs in March. Advance was broad based across firms by size and sector. Gains in leisure and hospitality led all service providers. Uh, a revised 486 in February. <clears throat> Market was looking for 450, so they pretty much peg it in there. Uh, service providers, 377,000 in March, right? Headline number was about 450. Service providers almost doing it all. That's 160. Th th I'll do it again. 161,000 in leisure and hospitality as part of service. Uh, other sectors like professional and business service and healthcare also advanced. Payrolls at good producers increased 79,000. That's a jump in manufacturing. Companies with fewer than 50 employees added 90,000 jobs. Large businesses, 177,000 jobs. Uh, that data coming ahead of non-farm payrolls on Friday. Really remarkable that we march on. We're gonna get non-farm payrolls for Friday. We're gonna get wage data, that'll be important. We got CPI coming out, I think in a couple weeks after that. Uh, nonetheless, we march on. We're going to get a full month of data yet again. And guess what? We're coming into earnings yet again, right? 
It's March 30th. Tomorrow's the last day of the month. April 1st kicks things off on Friday. And just like that, the quarter begins within a couple weeks. It's going to start all over again. And uh, it's going to be interesting again to see how these companies meander, navigate such an environment of inflationary pressures, wages rising, supply chain issues, uh, persistent, persistent, to say the least, especially over the last three months, right? All right, let's jump around to other articles I got pulled up here. Um, we will jump to Walgreens. So Walgreens, they're going to turn to robots to fill prescriptions as pharmacists take on more responsibilities. Uh, they're opening a robot, robot-powered robot micro-fulfillment centers across the U.S. to fill customers' prescriptions. Folks, it is happening, okay? Uh, you're just going to see this as a constant, constant rollout. Unfortunately, uh, they're going to be replacing workers here, no matter how you shake it out. Uh, and as a society, we're going to have to meander that, man, because you're going to be able to run multi-billion dollar businesses with robots pretty soon. I mean, Amazon, there are so many workers probably in the Amazon chain that'll probably, it's not a matter of if, folks, it's just a matter of when. And if you equate that, you know, if you really internalize that, that it's a matter of when a lot of employees get replaced by computers and robots, we're going to have to figure out what to do because there are a lot of people, unfortunately, who are doing jobs right now that are replaceable by a simple computer and robot. And that is not good as the technology is really catching up. By 2025, as much as half of Walgreens' total prescription volume could be filled at the automated hubs. It's quite a, quite a number. They're going to open 22 facilities across the country. Folks, <coughs> that's two and a half years from right now. Okay, each robot can fill 300 prescriptions in an hour. What is that? That's that's five every minute. That's one every 12 seconds without a break, 24 seven. Not hard to imagine why they're going to do that. Half of Walgreens prescription volume by 2025. Automation could help Walgreens focus on ways to differentiate from online pharmacies such as Amazon Old Pill Pack and CVS, which owns health insurer Aetna and pharmacy benefits manager Caremark. Yeah, I imagine they're all going this way, folks. So the robot-powered center in North Lake, 36 miles northwest of Dallas, offers a glimpse of the future. 220 workers, okay, you have a handful of licensed pharmacists, and 35,000 prescriptions are filled at the facility, and eventually that number is going to increase to as many as 100,000 daily. Uh... Yeah, it's going to be a shift, and we'll see how society meanders that one, man, because it is coming. All right, jumping over to mortgage rates. Uh, excuse me, refinances down 60%. Not surprising, folks. Um, you know, if you're looking to refinance, get it done. That's the bottom line. The average contract interest rate for a fixed mortgage confirming loan balance, 4.8% from 45 Refinance fell, uh, fell 15% for the week and down 60% from a year ago. Home buyer mortgage demand rose 1% for the week, but down 10% from a year ago. Should not be surprising with where, where rates are going. Cannabis. So some of the cannabis stocks have been accelerating. We'll jump around to some of those real quick. Canopy growth. We have some canopy in my news, newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. We're fortunate to get in there uh, just prior to some of that acceleration. We'll back it up about 10 days. I think we were in there maybe Tuesday or even Wednesday. Nah, let me see. Where were we? Yeah, I think we got in there Wednesday, and the acceleration began Thursday. Today, we'll finish this up when we come back. Uh, House panel hearing on federal legalization bill. As we all know, folks, it takes a while for something to become a bill and a law. And uh, this is the first step. I'm sure it's got a few hiccups along the way, but nonetheless, we'll check out those stocks. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com 
educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down 15 points right now. NASDAQ 100, negative by 87. You got the Dow off 102. Uh, Going to chart a canopy up here. Now, be very careful on these equities, folks. There's nothing to say that they have found a bid just yet. There's been a few times that you've had some bounces here. I'm going to put it back on a daily. Uh, was that run back in November? Maybe that had to do with some legalization. I remember when New York passed things um, that catches a bid. There have been a couple times, but each time it's been lower prices. Uh, this one we will see, though. On Wednesday, the House Rules Committee set to hold a hearing on the Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement Act, which would decriminalize cannabis at the federal level. The bill, better known as the Moore Act, would also create provisions for banking and consumer packaged goods sales. The measure is expected to head to the full House for a vote on Friday. It's got to go to the House. It's got to go to the Senate. It's got to go to the President. Um, President Biden, actually one of the few Democrats, not even sure really where he falls on this, unfortunately, because I think it's something that should be a no-brainer, folks, um, in terms of legalization. But that's not the case. And you need the Senate. You need the president. There's a lot in here that, that could um, seems like we all know politicians, right? Everybody can find a problem somehow. And there is a lot in here in terms of expungement. I believe in all of it, folks. All right. People who are caught with small amounts of marijuana for personal use that are not violent and involved in gangs. It's the most victimless crime I can think of. And there's no reason why their lives should be destroyed over it. And many people's lives have. It almost sounds insane that that's the truth, but it is. Um, so we'll see if that happens. Now, uh, Wednesday, yeah, so here's what they're talking about, right? I mean, uh, the House vote's basically symbolic and estimates Democrats would need at least 10 Republican votes in the Senate to overcome a filibuster and pass a cannabis bill. However, the House debate could prove insightful with midterm elections looming this November. You know, I just don't understand how an entire party is against marijuana legalization in the year 2022. And, and you know, you talk about police needing, needing the ability to do their jobs, folks. The last thing that we should be paying cops to do is to spend their time locking up criminals for low levels of marijuana possession. And then you think about the facts that not only do that, then we, then we spend money to put those people in boxes called jails and prisons. We spend that money as well. And then those people are hurt for the ability to get a job so they can't participate in the economy. Just makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, nonetheless, that's going to happen today. So it'll get some headlines out there um, and we'll see what happens. 
but it's going to take some Republicans, and I'm not sure that's happening right now. We'll find out. Um, but nonetheless, it starts today, so we'll hear some. Um, now, here's what I'll say as well. You are getting bounces, but I've said it before. Bounces on small numbers, percentages on small numbers can be deceiving, folks. You've had some big bounces in percentage terms. But, boy, you are down from about 60 bucks, 56.50 this year, and you were back up at that area, folks, as 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 far back as October of 2018 in the 59s. So a little tough to get excited in this. If you are trading it, um, you better be aware of the fact that it can probably go to zero at this point. Anytime you're dealing with a chart that goes from 56 down to five over the course of a year, you better realize that if you're in this equity and you don't put a stop in there, zero dollars is possible. Um, eventually, they will catch a bid, but not sure that's going to happen just yet. Let's jump around to some of the stocks that were really rocking yesterday, man. Boy, some of the growth stocks, et cetera. I mean, Roku was up from 128 to 138. You're up 139 almost, 140. You had some huge moves. Uh, DraftKings was a reminder because they've been beaten down so bad like some of the cannabis stocks. They really accelerated higher from 1850 to almost 21 percentage term. Big numbers. You're backing off a bit. Uh, many of those stocks... I mean, even Zoom had quite the acceleration, right? Uh, a lot of talk in the Tiger's Den yesterday about ARC. Because, yeah, some of those stocks in particular, man, they were on a run. ARC going from 65 to 72. From Monday's glow to Tuesday's high, that's a 10% acceleration from that number, folks. Uh, a lot of stocks in there. But guess what? We'll give it some time. Because you take a look at this NASDAQ 100, man, you put it on a daily to see the pop we have seen. And boy, that is an acceleration, folks. I talked about it yesterday. We had a 12, whoops, we had a 12,900 handle. And uh, yes, we are up to 15,100 now on the NASDAQ 100. All right, let's jump around to some of the other headlines I have going on for the day. Stocks making moves. BioNTech, they're up 6%, significantly better than expected revenue and profit for the quarter. Reiterated its prior vaccine revenue guidance for 2022. BNTX is their symbol. One of the vaccine stocks. Talk about volatility, man. Uh, you're going to pop about nine bucks today. But boy, even from where we were just in November at 360, at 464, you're down at 183 for BioNTech. And yeah, I mean, remarkable that you're back to where we were trading at almost a year ago, April in 2021, before that whole run higher. And you take a look at Moderna, the same deal. Now it's Pfizer and BioNTech, but similar action in terms of right back to where we were a year ago all of these stocks really getting ahead of themselves in a big way five below out with their numbers lower in the pre-market following a mixed quarterly report beat estimates by a penny 249 a share but both revenue and comp sales below analyst forecast they were talking about five yesterday on fast market and, uh, yeah you're gonna drop about eight bucks this thing's had some real volatility too you take the COVID lows up to the high, we touched the 50%. That low, about 143. We're trading at 162 right now, uh, just below the 382 of that full run that we had. Now, the low from October 4th, I was looking at yesterday, 165. So we're actually going to open below that for five below on their numbers. Back to a 15 minute, and there's the move on their numbers. Down to 156, conference call beginning as I came on the air for that equity. Restoration hardware. Lower in the pre-market after the high-end furniture report. Uh, lower than expected revenue for the quarter. Profit came in slightly above. They announced a three-for-one stock split. Stock splits in vogue, it seems. Restoration hardware, this thing. Uh, there's some volatility from 384 to 355. Now you take a look at this thing. And to give it a full context of the chart up here, really interesting action. When you look from COVID lows of 73 bucks up to 744, we're trading right now at 355, the 618. You're looking to get in this thing, 330 or so. Uh, maybe we'll pull back. We're trading at 355. Not sure we get there. We're down from a consolidation near 744 for the better part of last year. Strong equity, quite a pullback. I like that 618. And interesting, right? I love the Fibonacci levels. That was quite a buy as it touched that 618. We've bounced a bit. We're backing off a bit as well for restoration hardware on their numbers. Lululemon. Athleisure. They started the athleisure trend, man, uh, and it's it's flourishing up 7.4 in the pre-market despite a quarterly revenue miss. Adjusted quarterly profit of 3.37, nine cents above estimates. Upbeat guidance for 2022 and a billion dollar share buyback program. Upbeat buy up. Beat guidance. Market's always loving that, and you're gonna pop in a big way. So you're gonna pop to about 370. 370 on this chart. There you are. 
Now, this is coming up to kind of the area of the end in 2020 in, but putting it on a 15-minute chart. There's a pop for you last night, and you're trading a little bit higher as well to 370 on their numbers. Lululemon, Athleisure, upbeat guidance. The world has changed, folks. Athleisure, a lot more relatable in a lot more facets of life forever moving forward. And uh, Lulu started that trend, and it is not stopping anytime soon. All right, let's jump back to the markets as we come into this final break before the opening bell. We get the S&Ps right now. Down by just 12 points. We've caught a little bit of a bid since about 8.15, 8.20 this morning. You're up from 46.02 to 46.13. You back things up. We're at about 46.16 at about 7.30. We're going to open the market when we get back in three minutes, folks. All the markets in the red. Crude up $3.29. You got gold up 11 bucks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back for the opening bell. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got markets catching a little bit of a bid. You got the S&Ps only negative by single digits. You think about where we've come from in this market from the lows of March 15th, folks, to where we are right now. If you just consolidate for a bit, I think a lot of market participants would be pretty happy. Uh, we'll see if that lasts, as in we commit to some pretty important economic data on Friday. 
But even seeing the market down 10 points right now, you put this thing on a daily to remind you where we've been, where we've come from. March 15th, you had a low of 41.29. The S&Ps are trading up almost 500 points from that price level 15 days ago. Talked about it on my show yesterday. A uh, healthy pullback in this move would just be to about 44.35. Now, that's an interesting price level when you think the only real red bar, and I say real red bar, right? We got one on March 21st. Yes, it's a red bar, but man, that's a tiny body in a red bar. The only body that is of any significance brought us back to a pretty similar price point, about 44.35. Folks, that's 180 points from where we're trading at right now, but that would just be a 382. We are experiencing high volatility in this market. We got non-farm payrolls coming on Friday. We're going to get CPI after that. Uh, hold on for your hats, for, to your hats, folks, as the expression goes. All right, you've been hearing us talk about it, folks. I encourage you, if you haven't yet, we have a lot of great tigers and tigresses in our new Tiger's Den trading room over at Discord. I encourage you to check it out on the front page of TFNN.com, folks. It's $1 for the entire year. The only reason we're really charging money for our customers, for our subscribers, for the community of TFNN Tigers and Tigresses is just make sure we're not getting constant spam in there, constant people signing up with a number of different accounts with email addresses. We charge a dollar. We're able to verify people's identity. That way we keep it real. All right. It's going to be a real community of traders, folks. It's an awesome place already. We've got a bunch of people in there. One of the cool things about Discord is that it's an outstanding piece of software for what we're doing, especially uh, a lot of great possibilities in the future. We're going to be doing some cool stuff with it coming up, uh, but it's also something you can use on mobile and on tablets. So outside of even market hours, we've start seeing the den getting a lot more action. Maybe some nights you'll see some tigers, tigresses in there chatting. Maybe they're just sitting on their tablet or their phone, sitting on the couch, watching the market, chatting about the overnight action, maybe some fundamental news, maybe some Europe news, some Asian news. And nonetheless, people are in there at about seven in the morning as they start chatting about the market coming up uh, until at least the close. But check it out, folks. It's a dollar. You can't go wrong. And uh, check it out. It's brand new. We got a lot of great tigers in there right now. And uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Check it out on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, back to some of the stocks that are moving. Micron out with their numbers. 214 a share, 17 cents above estimates. Chipmaker also reported better than expected revenue. Uh, yeah, data center and smartphone chip sales showed strong growth. Micron upbeat revenue forecast for the current quarter. The chip stocks, man, don't sell on those chip stocks. MU, there's a pop for you, man. You were just trading in the 60s. You're trading at 84 right now, up 2.6%. As you get the market pretty strong on a day following uh, quite the acceleration. Chewy, how about down 13.5% for a miss? Uh, the product, pet product seller lost 15 cents a share. The market was looking for an eight cent loss. Labor costs and profit margins shrunk. It's gonna be interesting to see folks, if you're selling physical products, right? You gotta make up for your costs. And man, if you have trouble transferring those costs to your customers, good luck to those profits. Chewy, down 12%, kind of just in this consolidation you've been in for the better part of this year, between about 50 bucks and the low end, about $37. We're right in the middle of that consolidation right now at 45 bucks for Chewy. WeWork has added an additional role of chairman. Um, that's just, I just kind of chuckle at WeWork. Uh, I'm gonna check out that movie that's out, right? What's it, what's it? excuse me, is that on Apple? One of them. Um, I mean, that's gonna be a Harvard Business School uh, study for sure, in terms of how, SoftBank just allowed that company to work them to the tune of that founder stepping out with billions, even though it's basically a failed company. And yeah, so we got Pearson, they're lower. Private equity firm said unable to reach an agreement with Pearson on a possible takeover bid. And Wayfor Wayfair is lower as well as they get a downgrade to sell from hold, predicting a negative impact of the Fed tightening and the end of COVID related stimulus. Way Wayfair is so expensive, man. That's my history. Let's take a look at this thing. Our man Basil Chapman is next with the Tiger Technicians Hour, folks. He always talks about the symmetry of some of those cup and handle moves. And boy, this is pretty symmetrical when you talk about the upside, the cup formation, and guess where the bottom of that cup rests, folks? 21 bucks. Not sure you're going back to 20, but boy, you're down from about 300 to 121 right now. And they are in a very competitive business, folks. Online sales, um, very competitive business to say the least. So be careful on that one. All right, jumping around to some of the other headlines I had up here. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, let's jump over to the crypto one we were talking about to kick off the show. Not familiar with all these networks, but hackers? 
They stole about $600 million from a blockchain network connected to the popular Axie Infinity online game in one of the biggest crypto attacks to date. <clears throat> Computers known as nodes operated by Axie Infinity maker Sky Mavis and the Axie DAO that support a so-called bridge software that lets people convert tokens into ones that can be used on another network were attacked. <coughs> Excuse me, the hacker draining what's known as the Ronin Bridge of 173,600 ether and 25 million US dollar coin tokens in two transactions. The breach happened on March 23rd, only discovered Tuesday. It is the wild, wild west, folks. Uh, and they were chatting in the Tiger's Den today, saying great stuff. Like, how does this happen, right? I'm hearing, you know, I, I think the comment was, uh, yeah, from our man Dan. Have seen reports of about a billion dollars of crypto hacked and stolen in the last 48 hours. Does digital money really have a chance? How do they account for that on the chain? I don't know. Uh, I do not have a fundamental aspect uh, understanding of the crypto to answer it well enough. When you say how do they account for it on the chain, I think that they still exist. They are just now held by somebody else on the chain and that is reflected in the chain i believe to the question is does digital money really have a chance it seems to me that if banks can figure out a way because we don't hear stories right about wells fargo about city getting hacked and people's accounts getting drained so it seems like it is possible with enough money if you're a multi-billion dollar corporation to spend on that type of technology and protection um, to make it foolproof. Now, it's never going to be 100% foolproof, okay? And the problem with crypto is you can't exactly call up your, your bank that you're doing business with and ask them to reverse that transaction because it's fraudulent. Because once that is in somebody else's hands, it becomes theirs. Now, my understanding of that, again, is that you can track a lot of crypto transactions. That's how some of these people get caught by the feds. Um, if it was that ambiguous and unknown and you could hide anonymity, if it was that anonymous, you'd be able to get away with a lot more. But we hear of the stories of the people that get caught. But boy, you look at it folks, uh, 600 million bucks, I think you can get it done because there's enough money out there. And if banks can do it, why can't a crypto exchange do it? I think what you're seeing here is you're, you're seeing just the revolution that the speed is working with in terms of that industry transforming. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. I mean, you have <coughs> exchanges that are doing monumental business that have just come out of nowhere and they don't have the infrastructure to make sure that they can't get hacked and billions get lost. Doesn't mean we're gonna get there overnight, but yes, I think it's possible. When, when banks first started doing ATMs, um, people, of course, said, no way am I going to do that. I'm not going to trust it. It didn't catch on. You know what they had to do? Banks just had to spend more money to make it more acceptable and more fail-proof and more confident for some consumers. And now it's all we do is ATMs. Stay tuned, folks. We'll Are be right you back. in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down about 14 points right now, trading at 46.10. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. Folks, you can reach Teddy every trading day at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. We got a lot to talk about today. Is there stuff happening in the market, Teddy? What's going on, man? Just a um, little bit. <laughs> how, about, how about to kick it off, man? How about the volatility in crude? $10 in one way and ten dollars back up today teddy where do you want to kick things off uh well with crude i think it's winding its coil you know so i mean we set a range you know at the beginning of the month with the, with the high obviously and a big um higher swing low and now it's kind of just you know getting tighter and tighter and we're pretty much trading around that middle price of that new range that we've established so I think right now, you gotta wait for the breakout one way or another. If we go down, I think all you're gonna do is kind of test those lows from a week and a half ago. Um, I don't see it breaking too hard. I would say that you would see it, we're probably in a consolidation range right now for the most part. And there's a lot of uh, other reasons why that's coming into. Remember I told you way before we got to this level, you know, we, we exploded up to these highs. You know, remember I said once we get to that 110 level, consumers are gonna start to be the drag on the market so it doesn't matter about supply demand is going to diminish you know and we are starting to see that so i think that's kind of why the oil market is volatile without a doubt you know i'd be very careful trying to sell this market that's for sure um but i think that's why you're seeing a consolidation right now and i am overall still bullish um i think one of the biggest things we need to talk about is what the bank of japan uh did and the japanese government did on monday are you aware of what they did I'm not, but I pulled up the chart and I'm aware of the move that it had. So what's going on okay. with the yen? Okay, well, let me explain this to you. Um, I am now short the U.S. dollar yen, and you know I've been long for you okay, know, eight months. Okay, this is months. a good one. Let's hear okay. it, because I know this is a change for sure. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. The gold bugs so, are going to like this. Let's go. <laughs> absolutely. Well, I knew you would like this. That's why I wanted to get into this. So here's what happened. Okay, on Monday, the uh, Japanese uh, government and the Bank of Japan said that they are not going to allow their currency to be devalued anymore. OK, so Ooh. now you realize that it's not just the dollar that's been strong versus the yen. I've been saying all the crosses versus the yen have been in a bull market, you know, so the yen has been just getting pounded. So they, they drew a line in the sand on Monday. They said there's no way they're letting the U.S. dollar yen get uh, above 130. Okay. okay, so that means they are definitely, and they said that raising interest rates is on the table. Now, when was the last time you heard the Bank of Japan say they were going to raise interest rates? Yeah. Okay. And yeah. the Bank of Japan is not like, and their and their uh, their government is not like our Fed and our government, where they're way behind the curve, and they're also not going to do a quarter point or something like that. Like they would do something like I would think they would do. They would do like what the Swiss would do. Instead of doing a quarter point, they're going to do at least a half a point. They may be do a, a whole percentage point Just right bring away. It, right. Yeah. Just bring it. Well, especially. 
if the market rallies up to 130, they're putting the brakes on. They're not going to do a quarter point and see what it does. Sure. They're going to say, yeah. We're going to get in front of this market because no one can control the market. But if you make right. a move like that, you can cause enough of a reaction where prop. I mean, people are not going to fade that in the short run. OK. Yeah. And I think yeah. you can expect that to happen. OK. So I'm still, you know, right now, all the fundamental factors are there that would support the bull market, you know, that's going on. But this change in tune is huge. OK. And then the thing that followed this is that the Fed, our U.S. Fed, came and reiterated how they may actually do a half a point at the next time, you know, which I've been saying for a long time, instead of doing a quarter, they should do at least a half a point and do it for several times to catch up, you know. So and I think that the U.S. Fed is now they have a little noose on their neck saying, oh, geez, you know, this war, the central banks began last summer, the U.S. finally got in. And with what's going on because of, you know, the, the lockdowns and everything and the supply chains, you know, look what's happened to the Japanese economy. They were the first ones to open up back in December fully. You know, they had the engines turning on. And just what we've seen in the past two weeks, you know, yes, I was happy the last couple of times we've talked. Well, of course, I've been long. It's been going sideways for months. But now the Japanese know that, you know, in the, initially it was helping their exports. OK, but now it's getting to the point where they're not making any money. The, everything's cost yeah. more for them to do. And it's great for us because the dollar is strong, but not, they're not going to sell anything if they can't make a profit. You know, sure. so yeah. and I think what you're going to see now is this is one of the big reasons why you're seeing the dollar index in a short term correction, because the yen obviously is coming back. OK, so yeah. dollar strength is losing there. Now you have the euro and the pound, which are the two biggest components also that have been railing for the past couple sessions. OK, now I would be leery Like right here's the thing is everything is in a corrective mode right now and you have to view it. The U.S. dollar yen, am I calling a top? No, but I think it's going to be really hard to make a run up towards newer highs right now. Now, if oil starts to explode and the tre and the Treasury bond market and the 10 year notes start to go back on lows, which right now they're retreating to the upside, you know, if yes. that goes back to their major major trend, well, then the U.S. dollar yen is going to make new highs and go towards that 130 mark, you know. Okay. So and that's when we know that then we have to watch out for the BOJ. And they're telling you we're talking about the samurais. They're going to come out as soon as that number hits. I, they're not going to say we're going to have a meeting in two weeks. They're going to sure. actually do it overnight, whatever. It's going to come. It's going to be like a Pearl Harbor strike. You know, because that's pretty so, intense when you tell the market too, right? Then they know absolutely the kind of where the, the line is in the sand, man. Yeah, that, right. That, yeah. So so and this impacts, obviously, the gold market, all kinds of other markets, you know, so I think that you really have to watch the yen right now. And it's going to be interesting to see how this pans out, you know, it's because the, the rest of the news isn't covering this, you know, which is I was stunned because on Monday, you know, I obviously was watching it Sunday night. I'm like, oh, my gosh, look at this is up at 123, 124, 125. You know, it pulls back a point and a half. And I'm like, well, this is normal. It just had such a huge rally. But I'm like, well, let me see what's going on with right, the news. I, cu digging, I couldn't sure. find anything, you know. But then when I saw what happened with the announcement, I'm like, how is this not breaking news on CNBC? Sure. You sure. know, like this is huge for our interest rate market, for the currency markets, yep. and for us buying stuff from Japan. You know, yep. I realize that Hondas and Toyotas are made here, but we still buy stuff from Japan. <laughs> sure. No, totally, man. And you know? that's why we appreciate you having it on, man. Such great information. So. And it's really remarkable how much is in the news right now, man. And mm -hmm. that's probably part of it, let alone Sunday night and Monday, all the talk about Will Smith and his performance. But we'll leave that for, for everybody else. But isn't else. that crazy? But that overshadows the Bank of Japan. It's it, <laughs> You know, Teddy, it's remarkable, but then you add in all, I mean, we got, we just got ADP private, private payrolls, right? You got non-farm um, mm -hmm. coming up. You had President Biden and his remarks about Russia over the weekend. It's just so sure. much going on. Um, so just, I want to get your take real quick from the rates. It's, I find it so remarkable that, and I agree with you, and I think there's a lot of people, City put out their expectation, which is 450 basis point hikes and then two for the six mm -hmm. meetings. So you're talking about, you know, basically almost 10 hikes if you mm -hmm. add them all up of a quarter point over the next six meetings. So you're not the only one, and I agree. But then you look at the market that's, you know, within 175 points. We got about 45 seconds. What do you think about the market if we get that type of action, which many people think we may, man, whether it's 50 basis points once or twice? Um, what do you think the market's going to do as we, we come into that? And I know you're Forex, but what mm -hmm. do you, what's your take on the general markets as well, we get this bounce? Well, interest rates are, are a function of currency pricing, so I am all over the interest rate markets. I think you're going to see the Treasury bonds trading around 108, 105, probably by September, 
you know, by the okay. September roll. You know, if okay. we do get those, that kind of a degree of rate hikes over yeah. the next few months, for sure. We'll see it down All right. there. So, Perfect. Big bear. Teddy, man, thank you so All much right. for the time, for the update. We, okay. we look forward to talking to you next week, man. All right, Tommy, take care. Have a great one. Folks, reach Teddy every trading day at his website, website forex-trading-unlock.com. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Stay tuned. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Just that quick, you get the Dow in positive territory. Check out the Dow popping to 35,238 right now. S&P is barely negative by eight. You got the NASDAQ 100 negative by 61. Let's jump around real quick, real quick to some of those FANG stocks. We got Amazon down almost a percent right now, giving back some of the gains it's had. Now, Amazon, man, it's been on a run. I have some Amazon and retirement accounts. But you're talking about a run from 2,600 and change to 3,400 and change, folks. Don't be surprised if this market has a little bit of a pullback, just even if it's a healthy acceleration upwards. The move that we've seen since March 15th. Uh, historic, to say the least, in some of these growth stocks especially. We jump over to Apple. Apple shares, 178.35. You're within about $4 of $3 trillion mark. Yet again on Apple, we jump to Microsoft shares, 
up to 313. You're giving back a bit uh, down six tenths. We jump over to ARC. Had quite the performance yesterday, giving back some of those gains today, down 2.2% as you see some of those growth stocks pulling back a bit. But the Dow holding on to some of the gains, up 29 points right now. Crude up as well, up to 108.62. Great discussion with our man Teddy. Uh, always insightful. And yeah, talk about uh, some news. It is really tough right now with the news cycle to hear everything going on. Uh, that interview, just one great example of the news out there that you got to keep track of. Gold. As we see that pullback in the end, you got gold trading up 18 bucks, man. You claw back all of those losses and then some of yesterday. Uh, and we are now back to where you were trading at on Monday in gold. Right now, up $18 at 19.35. And we jump to the all important notes and bonds. We're down a bit. You're trading at 122.06 right now. And we jump over in terms of where we're talking about for yields. Where are we? We are sitting right now on the 10 year. Let me pull it up. 2.41%, the yield on the 10-year. Over in Europe, you have the DAX really giving it back, down 1.5%. CAC rolled down a percent, giving back yesterday's. DAX was up like 3% yesterday. So giving back some of those gains, to say the least. And uh, yeah, we come into non-farm payrolls on Friday for the month of March. And then the next big one that uh, the market will be watching, April 12th. So that is less than two weeks away. So that is uh, a week from next Tuesday, April 12th. Put it on your calendar, folks. That is CPI data. April 12th, scheduled to release at 8.30. My show comes up at live at 9. Thanks so much for starting your trading day with me, folks. Don't forget, right now, head on over to the front page of TFNN. Sign up for the Tiger Stand for a dollar. You'll be in there in no time. Stay tuned, folks. Live programming all day. Basil Chapman's coming up next. We'll be right back.